What's up, everybody? This is Rob Barrington here from BridgeLesson.com, and this is one of two free previews that I'm doing for our weekend pro-am game. I run a game on BridgeBase every weekend. It's an eight-board match point robot tournament, and it's one that you can sign up for for absolutely free, and you get to play not only eight boards with the robots, you get to score against some of the best players in the entire world. That's right. This is a pro-am event. We have a bunch of top pros who are honestly in love with this event they play every weekend and they're super competitive with each other and you can be competitive with them in this tournament the pros get rewarded every time they place in the top 10 uh, in the weekly tournament so if you have a really good score you can display some of some of them to lower levels and keep them either out of the points or keep them from achieving a huge amount of points every week so this is a true pro-am the amateurs get a chance to kind of best the pros and so on and so forth and you get to look at all the results every single week from all the pros and anyone else who played the boards which as you can see uh, as of my provisional result here and that's kind of what we're looking at on this screen right now we're looking at what i stack up against at this point it's like saturday at noon right so so this is the result that i have achieved so far this will not be my final result this is just a provisional score for how i've done on these boards pretty decent result this week i'm, I'm happy it won't always be this good guys so so this is just a nice uh, one to kind of uh, advertise for you i was 71.16 percent with one kind of subpar board that I, I will talk about in a moment but each week you will get to play these eight boards and when you're done and when the tournament completes which will be usually saturday morning at about 1 a.m you'll you'll be able to see all of your results and stack them up against what we're going to talk about here so let's jump into the first board of the weekend this was just a really basic result of opening to no trump and letting it go all pass and take a look at all the hands here south is clearly going to open to no trump they don't want to upgrade here they don't have a five card suit so even though they're at the maximum of 21 they just show 20 to 21 balanced uh, in hindsight you know if you if you upgraded you probably could take nine tricks as, you, as i did on this board but take a peek you know that was still worth 87.2 percent up here and i just want to remind you this is a provisional result right so these results are going to change because the tournament hasn't actually ended yet i'm recording this just after i've played it so let's take a look at how the play went on this hand and it's interesting because once they make an opening lead of a heart we just want to count our winners right away and see where we stack up and at this point we should know we have four heart winners right we're gonna take all four of those and we have one club that's five <laughs> so so as far as our winners right now pretty gross right but we have opportunities to take extra tricks in a number of different places the the thing that we might look at here is hey that club suit looks like it might provide some extra tricks and that would be beautiful if they hadn't already knocked one of our entries out of dummy here now, now we could play a low heart and and win this ace of hearts in our hand but now what hand do we have to play clubs from our hand right so if we're going to play clubs we're going to want to take a club finesse towards this hand and we're also going to give up on the possibility of taking the length here because really if they fire another heart we're not going to have any opportunity to get over to that dummy notice the only entries we have are those queen jack of hearts and they're already getting to the point of knocking one out and we have to we have to be able to use one to take our club finesse and then we're going to have to use one to actually set up the clubs so notice how bad this is for us right if we take a club finesse and it's successful that's amazing right so now we'll take the ace queen but now we have to transport back over there to lead another club and this is only if the clubs are three three right so we're taking a huge risk here so immediately we should be kind of on on a different side of things usually we're looking at our longest suit when we're playing no trump and that's going to be our source of tricks and the longest suit we can see is clubs but the entries to that hand and the the need to not only lead once but twice from that same hand means we should just abandon clubs we're, we're going to take a club finesse at some point right to try to take one extra trick but we should give up on any hope of taking more than that okay so what other suit can we develop tricks in well spades might have jumped out at you but that may only be one and it's frequently only going to be one and remember that's a suit we're going to have to lead from this hand as well and if the ace of spades is on side we're not going to have to do that once we're going to have to do it twice so there again 
if we have to take a club finesse once, we can't lead spades twice to our hand. So we should be saying, okay, what else do we have? Well, diamonds is our key here. Look at that suit. We always get to develop two tricks in this suit just by playing it, right? Because partner spot cards are so amazing, right? This is a huge win for us, the 10-9 of diamonds. So my line on this particular hand was just to win the jack of hearts and then just lead a diamond, right? I'm just getting to the point of leading diamonds right away, trying to set up my two diamond tricks, and the opponents just are helpful here, right? Now they play diamond to the ace, great. And here comes a diamond back. So they're helping me just clear out my suit. I'm happy, right? I took the jack of diamonds. I took the queen and just pitched a club, right? Because I know that's a suit that I'm not going to be taking extra tricks in. And now I get to the business of, okay, I've taken my two extra diamond tricks. Let's just count our winners again, right? Always reassess where you are and make sure you make the right play based on that information. So here, I've already taken three tricks, right? So I'm going to take three more in hearts. That's six and I'm gonna take one more in clubs, that's seven at this moment, okay? I also can recognize I might be able to set up a spade trick if I have enough time to do this, but first things first, I wanna to get to dummy and do the one thing I've always wanted to do, which is take that club finesse. So here comes the 10 of hearts, which I'm gonna overtake with the queen. The 10 of hearts is enough to win the trick, but I need to get to dummy, right? So here comes the queen of hearts, and here's my club finesse. Club to the queen. If it loses, we don't expect a club to come back, but we're st we'll still have a level of safety. But here it's gonna win, and now comes the point of that is an extra trick, and we're gonna make our contract now. The question is, do we have a chance to take extras? And the answer is yeah, right? Make sure you set up your ninth trick, right? Get that spade on the table. I played the queen, you could play the king, it doesn't make any difference, right? You're only gonna take one extra trick here. And now that you've taken it, it's time to take those winners. So no trump contracts are frequently going to be, hey, where are our winners? Where are our extra tricks? And eventually it's time to take it all, right? Because at this point, once we lead anything else, we're in danger. A spade would be terrible. We might lose a whole bunch of spades here if they're breaking really badly for us. So now was the time to cash out. Ace of hearts, king of hearts, ace of clubs, and that's a nine trick spot right there that's beautiful and notice that was enough to get you 87 percent. some of you get to these spots and you're like hey i should have been a game this is terrible no not at all it's amazing right 87.2 is a pretty amazing score to put on the card and that is the the beauty of of bridge right you don't have to be perfect right you just have to be as good or better than the rest of the people playing the hand so let's take a look at the most exciting board of the set board number two so I have to say, I got very lucky here. I got exceptionally lucky. Uh, the auction is just bizarre, right? And, and these don't happen too frequently, but take a look at what, what happens here. We open one heart with this nice solid heart suit and it goes four diamonds on our left. Now, one thing you should know about the robots is they're, they're usually very disciplined with their preempts. This is one of the more undisciplined ones I've seen, but they're not vulnerable and they have an eight card suit, right? So, so you expect them to have their bid uh, with these almost always. I've seen weird stuff and, and I can't rule any of that out, but for the most part, they're gonna be pretty disciplined. So we should know, you know, partner certainly isn't going to rate to have a bunch of diamonds and the king of diamonds in our hand looks like it might be wasted, but partner just gets in there with a five club bid and, and take a look at their hand. It's, it's just a nut case here. But if you, if you click on five clubs and make sure you're doing this when you play, right? Make sure you're understanding what they're going to be bidding. And it says strong rebittable clubs, 17 to 18 points. Okay. So we should understand that that is 17 18 total points so they're certainly adding a lot of value for their solid eight card suit and their void in diamonds um i made just a weird choice just to bid six hearts because honestly it looked like to me if partner had solid clubs and maybe one heart or two hearts or let's say stiff jack of hearts um making six hearts wouldn't necessarily be too terrible and on this one Unfortunately, I get to actually go plus on this because of the way the hand worked out. They didn't lead a spade. If they lead a spade, we're just destroyed here. But watch this. They lead a diamond. We get to rough the king. And now it doesn't even matter if hearts break because we're going to pitch all of our losers on that magical club suit. Uh, so we're going to play the ace of hearts. This is where uh, I'm looking at it saying, oh, this is bad. But is it that bad? No. I still get to make uh, the requisite number of tricks here and we are set. But to be honest, this is not the best uh, choice here, right? When, when, I, when I'm looking at this and especially when dummy come down, I'm just smacking myself in the head saying, if I just raise to six clubs, that's our best spot. Cause notice, even if they lead a spade, what do we do? 
well, we just play the ace, king, queen, uh, jack of gloves, as many clubs as we need to to draw Trump, and then we cross the dummy and try to find a way to get rid of our spade loser, and we'll be able to do that very easily, right? We may have to lose one spade in that spot, but if they don't lead a spade, now we'll take all the tricks because we can just rough out hearts uh, and just set up that entire suit, right? So... So here, I would expect them to lead the Ace of Diamonds against six clubs, and uh, we would do pretty well. The thing is, I I'm interested to see what the other pros did if they raised uh, clubs to six, or what what they might have done here if they if they bid something else. Maybe they bid five spades. I don't know. It's such a weird hand. And when you see shape like this, I don't want you guys to obsess over hands like this. You're not going to see these types of hands very often, right? You're not going to see a six-five big hand like the South player has, or for that matter, the West or the North hand in, in these times. So I don't want you to look at this and spend a, a whole bunch of time on it. I just want you to recognize that I was exceptionally lucky, which is why you see the score on number two of 96.1. Obviously not a lot of people bid six hearts. I just kind of closed my eyes and threw a dart <laughs> and hoping that it was okay and hoping that partner had something reasonable. The, the big thing is when they bid four diamonds, you know, you, you expect partner to have some cards in the suits, even though they did bid five clubs. We're not necessarily expecting this. In fact, I was expecting just a hand that might have some values, right? It says 17 to 18 total points. So so what if they just have like a nice seven card semi-solid suit and they have some spade honors? So I, I just assumed I was going to have some sort of dummy where I would have play. Uh, however, you know, it looks like six clubs might have been the better choice. And I know it looks weird raising with a singleton, but... The robot is not going to make this bid without some sort of suit like this. They have other choices. They could double here. They could do a ton of other things with different types of hands. So when they proceed to this level, especially the game level, with their own suit, we should expect them to be self-sufficient. So really cool hand. That I got wrong, but I got really lucky. This is this is duplicate bridge, right? Sometimes you're just going to make a bad or maybe subpar bid and come out smelling like a rose. That was me on this one. Number three, though... I, I chickened out, and, and I chickened out for a very, very good reason that I'm going to relay to you now. Number three, I played in four hearts making five, and you can see the 49.4%. Why do you guys think that is? If, you, if you're not looking at the results just yet, what could have caused this when you see this type of hand? The thing that causes it is the fact that you make the same number of tricks in no trump that you do in hearts. And I have a chance to pass three no trump. But I'm going to tell you this just for the reason I did this was so I could say this and not be um, hypocritical. When you have a nine card major suit fit, play in your major 100% of the time. Uh, as I'm saying this, I can tell you that three no trump is so much better on this board. But that's not always the case, all right? And in fact, North, in a realistic way, might just bid three no trump sometimes anyway and forego their five card heart suit because they have a hand that's close to slam, but they know we're not gonna make slam. So here, they might just bid three no and assume they're gonna take enough tricks and get us to the right side. The robot's never gonna do that. And to be honest, we shouldn't be doing this either. We shouldn't be thinking about this at all. When we discover we have a nine card major suit fit, even when we're flat, notice this board right here, we're totally flat, right? So we might say, hey, I don't want to play in my suit because I'm flat. But partner doesn't have to be, right? That is the very big thing about this thing. Partner does not have to be flat. They could have a lot of extra shape that you're not, that you don't get to find out about. Maybe not always here. They might be able to bid in another suit. But anyway, nine card fits, just play in your major always. And that's what I did to my detriment here. If, if I do pass three no Trump, and if you did you get handsomely rewarded, right? Because you just get that 10 points higher. Instead of 450, it's 460. If this were imps, it would not matter. In fact, we would always play four hearts no matter what because the 10 points is irrelevant. In match points, it's huge. I'll be interested to see what people that played 3 no making five were able to scrape together. I would say it's in the 80s maybe, uh, which means I, I, had a I think I had a chance at winning this week if I get this board right. Uh, and I think... In my opinion, I got this board right. It's just unlucky that 3 no Trump makes the same. So let's put it that way. And just, just dial us in. When you have a nine-card major suit fit, play in the major and don't worry about it. If you get a result like this that's kind of weird sometimes, it's okay. Right? It's okay. Just move on to the next board, confident that you did the right thing for the long run. We're making long-run decisions. We're, we're, we play this game in perpetuity. So we're all just trying to make the best decision the most amount of times. And this is the best decision the most amount of times, guys. All right, let's take a look at number four. So take a look at this auction and tell me if it looks weird to you. It shouldn't. 
and it's because of something special. The auction was one club by our left-hand opponent, pass, pass to us. Think of the balancing seat as a spot that you can lock up um, their contract, basically. So when they open one of a suit and it goes pass, pass, you can end the auction there by just passing. And, and what I'm trying to get at is, do you think you need to have a preemptive bid available? And what's the point of preemptive bidding? Well, the point of preemptive bidding is to keep the opponents out of their best spot, right? Which here we can possibly, we can very frequently do that by just passing and letting them play. It's usually not right for us, but it's a spot that it has special circumstances. So we don't need any preemptive bids. So jump over calls here will be intermediate in nature, opening hands, six card suits. The bid of two no Trump actually is about 18 to 19 or 18 to 20 points in this balancing seat. And that's exactly what we wanna show with this hand. Two no Trump is very standard. Double is interesting. Maybe you get to find a spade fit in this spot, but double isn't necessarily going to show your it's not the most efficient bid, let's put it that way. We can still find a major suit fit by bidding two no trump because our systems should still be on in this situation. So here, show your values and bid two no trump. One no trump will be about 11 to 14 as far as your balancing range. You're gonna take about three points off that total. And that means that doubling and then bidding no trump will be your strong no trump, like 15 to 17, 15 to a bad 18, something like that, right? So here, when we have these good 18s, 19s, even 20s, we're gonna be bid two no directly and now we've made a more efficient bid with our values and for the second time this set we get to play two no with a good hand opposite a really bad one okay so take a look at what happens and it's just kind of a frustrating hand because it looks like you might be able to set up diamonds at some point take a look they lead the queen of diamonds which by the way the two of spades is so normal over here for the left hand opponent i don't know what they're doing we see that we've we haven't shown anything it's like us opening a no trump and it going all pass you want to lead a major so the two of spades would have been clearly the better choice you do not lead top of touching honors without length against no trump right we're trying to set up tricks not just one trick all right we're trying to set up a bunch of tricks so we usually lead from length the two of spades would have been perfect, but whatever. The robot leads the queen of diamonds. That's what's gonna happen on this one. And we see, okay, maybe with that six card diamond suit, we're gonna have a chance to set it up. So we give it a shot, All right? So bingo. We haven't set it up yet. We need to get to dummy to do so. And we have a way to do it if the robot helps us. Um, I will show you how they're not gonna help us. Watch this. Now I'm, I wanna look, it's possible uh, some people took a different line and were able to create two entries to dummy. And I, I wanna show you what I mean by that. So here, uh, after they lead the queen of clubs, we're gonna win the ace. And now, when you lead the three, when I led the three, I was hoping they played low to my left. Right? And, and now I get to win the 10, play a diamond, right? Letting them win their 10. And then I still have the king of hearts to enter and take the rest of those diamonds. All right, however, the robot makes an excellent play here, right? They're, they're saying, okay, if, if Declare has Jack third, I need to play this card, which is awesome, right? They, they did an amazing job here because what did they do? They took away the 10 of hearts as an entry for us, right? We're gonna have, after we take this king, the Jack in our hand and the 10 here. And we're not gonna be able to enter that dummy with that card. I'm interested to see if we had played the Jack and what, what I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm trying to you know make sure we can get there twice this way if we play the jack guess what they can foil us with now they can duck the heart right so a good player will do one or the other depending on what we do and the robot is really a good defensive player for the most part other than their opening leads as we just saw they're pretty solid on defense uh you know, save for, you know, their, their mistake situations. But here I'm interested to see if we play the Jack and they cover now we're home free, right? Now we just go diamond and then we'll have the 10 of hearts. Um, so I, I, I want to look at that when I see the, the final results. Cause remember when I'm doing this video guys, these are just provisional results. So all I can see is what I did at my table. I can't compare with anyone else until the tournament actually ends, which is fair, right? So here, this is the spot where, okay, I have to play the king. And now I kind of abandon diamonds, right? I'm saying I, they're not going to let me get there. So at this point, I'm trying to scrape together uh, an extra spade trick. That's what I'm trying to do here. I'm hoping spades break 3-3. Three, three, or I'm hoping the tennis spades is to my right and I get to 
bang out an honor with this nine of spades. None, none of these things are happening as we can see. But watch what the opponent does. Now they cash their ten of diamonds assuming we can't get to dummy anymore. And they lead the heart and we just win the jack. Right? So now when I play a low spade, it goes queen, king, disaster. Right? Second hand low, robot. Second hand low. What's going on? I see how it can be confusing though. Right? It looks like we might be trying to sneak a trick in if we do have like the ace and king here. Uh, but here it goes queen, king, and now look at what the robot has to do. Club, we win our king. And now I just get to enter the dummy. Well, let me go back there and show you what happens here. At, at this point now, now I just get to play a low spade to the jack. And then that nine, seven of diamonds will be my winners, right? So they created an extra trick when those honors crash together. And that's all she wrote on this one. So another pretty good score, uh, 150. Again, I'm interested to see on this one what will happen if, uh, if they actually, and, and let me just show you this again, if they actually cover the jack of hearts right maybe we get to scrape together even more but again 63.2 you're super happy anything around 50 or more you should be very happy it means you're kind of with the field for the most part and and let's take a look at number five to see what we did here here uh long auction but a fun one and and i want to draw your attention to the beginning of it we opened one no trump with our balance 16 count right i think we had no we had 17 excuse me so we open one no trump and it goes two clubs on our left now the robot plays this as capoletti which means they're, they're just showing some single suited hand here and and it's clearly spades as we can see with all four hands being shown here but this is the important agreement you should have when they interfere over your one no trump opening bid with double or with this bid two clubs as long as it's not a, a conventional bid showing like both majors, we play systems on. And what that means is when they double, it's just like they didn't do anything, right? So two clubs of stamen and two diamonds is a transfer. Here, they've taken away the two club bid, but now double of two clubs would become stamen. And the reason we're able to have the rest of our system is we still get to have statements. So now two diamonds gets to be a transfer to hearts and two hearts gets to be a transfer to spades. But guys, if you're ever confused about this when you're playing on bridge base, just click on the bid and make sure you know what it is, especially when it is surrounded by that red border, right? That means it's something special. So make sure you're checking this out and also make sure you didn't super accept with this hand. Now, what is a super accept? Well, when partner transfers, and you have a maximum of 17 points and four card support for the major they're transferring into, you super accept by bidding three hearts, okay? Here we have a maximum, but we only have three hearts, so we just accept like a normal transfer. And now they kind of show their suit to the West. They bid two spades. Partner bids three diamonds, which is just an unbalanced hand with five hearts, at least four diamonds, and it says we're going to game. And as you can see, partner might only have an eight count, but they know their shape is really good. And now when West bids spades their void is just amazing right they're so happy to see that that's their suit because now they, they know we have less wasted values in spades now because this person is advertising a reasonably strong suit right so here it's a little unlucky we have the king of spades but that's still a very nice position on this particular hand so at this point we have to remember that this is a game forcing bid so we bid just three hearts uh the slower approach to game will show uh, a better hand here and we're, we're a maximum so we don't want to discourage partner if they're thinking of going further unlikely with the opponents being in here but still this is just good bridge jumping to four hearts here would say hey i have a heart fit um but i'm kind of on the lower end of things here we just show our fit in hearts and partner kicks us into game and now let's look at the play of this one this one's a fun one when they when the robot leads a singleton or sorry when the robot leads an honor that looks weird i will tell you this take it to the bank that it's a singleton right it's almost never a doubleton although it could be sometimes i suppose historically bad leads right you you really don't want to lead stiff honors like stiff queens stiff kings because those are cards we're going to finesse for pretty frequently but the robot does this very frequently and here we just have to understand all right we need to be in a hurry to draw trump right they have gotten to their short suit so if we don't draw trump efficiently they are going to be able to scrape together a diamond rough. So at this point, recognize one other thing. There is no heart finesse, guys. We do not have the 10 of hearts, so there's no heart finesse. And ask yourself this question. If you're thinking of crossing the dummy and plunking down the jack of hearts, ask yourself one very important question. Is 
a cover by the opponent going to be good for our cards or for theirs? What I mean is, if we play the jack and right-hand opponent plays the queen, is that good for us or good for the opponents? Who is it creating a trick for? And it should be obvious it's creating a trick for the opponents, not us. So we draw Trump efficiently by playing the Ace of Hearts and the King of Hearts. And sometimes we'll get lucky and the Queen will fall doubleton and it's home free from here. But here we'll see this. And let's get to part two of this, this nice play. Once we see this, the Trumps are dividing evenly. There is one Trump left out there for the opponents and it is a winner for them. So what do we do, guys? We stop drawing Trump. We're done. We never draw any more Trump. In fact, drawing Trump here would be a disaster because it's going to create another club loser. What we should recognize is when we play diamonds, we are going to be able to pitch one card from our hand and we're going to pitch a club. And then we're going to be able to rough a club with this tiny little two of hearts. And that's just because we're going to leave that Trump out there. It's a beautiful look here and uh, take a peek diamond. And lefty can trump anytime they want, by the way, because we still have that ace of clubs over there. They can't do anything about this. So lefty will be a little, you know, they, they like to hold their cards to the last possible second. So now watch this. When we play the eight of diamonds, oh, okay, I'll rough now. <laughs> they could have done this at any time. Wouldn't have made any difference whatsoever because we're able to shorten our club suit. And notice now they don't have any trumps at all. And that was just a weird way to draw trump. And now we get to rough a club. And bingo, we will lose a club over there in dummy, but still, we'll take 11 tricks on this hand, which is certainly more than enough to get us to 65.9%. Not too shabby on this one, folks, just by normal play. All right, so a couple big things. Systems are on after double and two clubs. So remember that when it goes one no trump, double or one no trump, two clubs, you and your partner should play all your systems on. And that's exactly the best way to play this, right? So double would be stamen, all the rest is normal. And then when we get to the play, notice that we have to draw trump quickly. And the best way to do that is ace king of hearts. And then when the queen doesn't fall, beautiful, right? We now just get to stop drawing trump and use the two of hearts to rough a club, right? So pay attention to all that stuff and you'll be sitting pretty in these suit contracts. Let's take a look at the last three boards. This last, uh, this next one was a competitive hand where the opponents were just in there throughout the entire auction. It went one spade on our right and we overcalled two hearts, which is perfectly normal. You'd like to have six card suits when you overcall at the two level. It's pretty normal to have that agreement, but when you have a solid opening hand, especially in these best hand tournaments, it is very important to get in there uh, as quickly as you can just show this because honestly this might be your hand especially being short in the suit that they've started with is a huge bonus on this one so it goes two spades pass pass and now take a look at how we reopen this auction we've already shown our five card heart suit right so now we want to give partner another chance to enter this auction in whatever way they choose it is exceptionally weird that partner never shows support for hearts. It's it's unreal on this one. Partner does have a three card heart suit, which means we could have played hearts instead of clubs on this hand, but take a look. After we've shown five or more hearts with our two level overcall, partner doesn't raise, which we can, we can forgive them for that. But now when we double, they choose clubs. I mean, okay. So, so when they choose clubs, they, they do know we have shown probably three or more clubs and that's their best fit. But remember, we're playing match points. And when we have a three card heart holding and partner not only bids hearts and then reopens double, why aren't we going to game? <laughs> this is, or at least bidding hearts, like give us some hearts partner. But this is why we play, we play bridge with partner sometimes that do weird things. The robots are not absolved from this uh, sort of behavior. So here, <clears throat> When they choose clubs and it goes three spades to our right, we should be thinking a couple of things. First of all, is our hand going to be better for offense or defense? And what are our prospects uh, on this particular hand? The prospects look pretty darn good. That singleton spade keeps getting better because they keep hitting spades, kind of further suggesting their, their strength in that suit. Uh, so we also know that I, from my perspective, it sounded like partner might have some spades, but not many, and only had two hearts, okay? So if that's the case, they have a lot of clubs 
and maybe they have some diamonds as well, or maybe they're short like they're, we're showing here. I wasn't expecting three hearts and dummy, but one thing we have to understand is we're not vulnerable, they are. So if we're going to make four clubs, that's great, but if we're gonna go down in four clubs, it suggests that the opponents probably have a good shot at making three spades, which means maybe down one, uh, doubled even is only 100, right? So we're, we can get a better score just by bidding, even if we are going down. As it turns out, partner just has the most amazing hand, and we're going to take 11 tricks in clubs. And, and let me show you how this is going to happen. Uh, they start out with the king of spades lead, which is perfectly normal, right? They play king from ace king, by the way, so it's perfectly normal for them. And then they just want to start drawing trump because they think that's going to matter here. Not so much, right? On this hand, we have so many ways to play it. We can go about it anyway. But the one major thing you just have to do is draw trumps, right? So draw trumps ending in the north hand because we want to take a heart finesse. And the heart finesse you want to take is a, is a heart to the 10, okay? Uh, and we're just trying to finesse for either the jack or the king or both, right? We're going to win all the tricks if east has the king jack of hearts. If east has the jack of hearts, we're going to promote the queen without without losing it, right? We're going to be able to promote the queen with the 10 of hearts rather than, uh, than uh, playing the queen and have it take the king here. So here, when we play low to the 10, it does lose to the jack which is your worst case scenario. But now when we get to play this suit one more time, and again, we're gonna take another finesse, uh, we see the king pop up and now the rest is just gravy here. All right, so cool hand. We're, we take an over trick here, unfortunately, but you know, it's weird that the robot didn't choose hearts, especially when we bid four clubs, they have another chance, right? They could bid four hearts now, but whatever. They chose to do what they did and we'll have to let them, you know, We'll have to send them a memo and say, hey, partner, how about getting us to our major next time? That would be nice. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at the second to last board, board number seven. Uh, another transfer situation and uh, a spot where we're likely just to play four spades, right? We have a perfectly normal one no trump opening bid with our 15 count. And it goes two hearts. We bid two spades. And partner bids three no trump. And once again, guys, you're going to correct to the major. And here it is way more important, in my opinion, to correct to the major because we're in danger. In, in diamonds, right? If they lead a diamond against no trump, we might have a real tough time taking the amount of tricks to just make this thing if diamonds aren't breaking as evenly as they are. So I will tell you when partner transfers in, you have a fit in a major, you're just always going to play in that major, especially when it's a nine card fit, right? You just don't don't go against this. And what you want to do, you, you don't want to be brilliant during the bidding. So many people try to win a hand in the bidding. And if you, if you ever watch the Wednesday morning tournament with Gavin and I, you'll notice we rarely are, are getting our top boards in the bidding. We're getting it by playing, right? By getting to the contract everyone else is getting to and just playing it as best as we can, right? So don't try to be brilliant in the bidding because you can't know that you're right when you decide to play three no trump with a major suit fit. And I will tell you in the long run, mathematically or results wise, you're wrong, right? You're going to take more tricks in a major suit and you're gonna score at, as close to that level of no trump as any other contract, right? So play your major suit fits. And here, when you get to four spades, there's really nothing to this hand, right? You're gonna knock out the ace of clubs, right? This is the easiest hand of the day as far as play wise. We take the ace of hearts, we draw trump to completion. Right? There's no reason to hold on to any of these trumps. And now the king of clubs gets played. And then we'll pitch uh, enough diamonds on the queen jack or on the jack 10 of clubs that we just lose one diamond trick in the end. So this should have been one of the flatter results, which as you can see, when you see yourself doing well and, and really doing the best you can and you get 57.3, it means that almost everybody did the same stuff, right? You're rarely gonna see a straight 50 flat result. But here, it's, it's as close as you're gonna get. And these last two look like you know those, those sorts of results, even though this one might have had some outliers for sure. And now last but not least, look at this last board, just a part score, right? It goes a club. Now, I think a lot of you probably overcalled a diamond, uh, which is fine. Or maybe you thought about making the power double, doubling and then bidding diamonds on this hand. Um, I don't think we're quite good enough for that with this particular holding, especially with queen X of hearts, but but, but, but I loved one no trump with this. Even though we're not technically totally balanced with a six card suit, we have stoppers in the opponent's suit and we're getting our values out there immediately, okay? And I think the reason 
my score is 92.4 isn't because of any brilliance in the play probably it's more likely that i I was one of the few that overcalled one no Trump. I would say that if you look at these results afterwards, I'm pretty confident that most of the top pros will bid one no Trump with this hand. If they're not doing that, they're doubling and bidding diamonds, I would guess. Um, but but I would think most of the pros are bidding a no Trump and having this exact same auction. And it might seem like a disaster. Right? You, you have a six card diamond suit and partners put you in a five two heart fit. Yuck. But that's not terrible, right? And that's something you have to expect when you when you make a no trump overcall. You might just be playing in partner's major, which you just have to do the best you can under the situations. And watch what happens here. They start by leading a spade, which is okay for us, right? This is a cool spot. We get to play the ace of spades, the king of spades. And my strategy on this hand was to get over to dummy and play spades and pitch clubs because I want to rough with my two hearts in my hand. I have to recognize, uh, I'm not gonna take a ton of tricks here, right? I'm at the two level though, so I can lose five. I just need to find a way to scrape together eight tricks. There's no way I'm running diamond tricks, right? I might be able to take one diamond if I'm lucky, but recognize how the heck do I get to that dummy? <laughs> it's a tough spot and, and I can't waste a heart and I don't want to start losing clubs either because they can knock out the ace of clubs and now I'm in real trouble. I'm going to lose two clubs, a diamond and a whole bunch of hearts possibly. So at this point, I just let a diamond and all I'm trying to do, I'm trying to set it up so that if they don't lead Trump, I can rough back and forth between the hands and, and watch what happens when you do this. It goes diamond, queen, you know, we, we, we wished we had seen the ace. Maybe we should have uh, led the jack to maybe induce the ace, who knows? That's probably a better play to be honest. So leading low here might not have been the best, but you know, whatever, the, the 10 is the same as the jack. So it's not like that's a huge deal, but now they do well, right? They get to their their side suit. So now when, when I take the ace of clubs, I have a way to enter dummy and that's by playing the king. I'm hoping they cover with the ace here. That's the only reason I did this was to take a roughing finesse. When they don't, I still rough the king of diamonds. And now, surprisingly, right, he's out of spades, right? I cash the queen of spades hoping that I can pitch a club, but they rough. But luckily, they only rough with the five. So I get to over rough with the six. This was a mistake by the robots. And now watch this. I get to rough a diamond back to dummy. I'll rough a little high just to make sure they have to rough with one of their big cards and not their three. And now I play another spade and they pitch a club. So now I pitch a club, right? I know this spade is going to hold because it's a winner. And now I'm trying to set up another rough. And here, this was a desperate spot for the robots. They needed to lead a trump to kind of break up what I was doing here, but they chose to lead another club and I get to slide in this queen of hearts here, boom. And now I'll, I'll show you uh, the perfect play by the robot here. I want to lead a diamond and I wanna see them play low. If they play low, I'm just gonna play the eight or the four. And now righty's gonna be end played, but they do another really good job. The robot played defense very well during this set. They hop up with the jack of hearts foiling my plan. Watch, if I play low now, now east will play the nine and then west no matter what they do is, is leading through the king so here when they play the jack i hop up with the king just hoping this is right and or hoping like the ten and nine crash into each other on the next trick but alas we've taken our eight tricks and that's the most we were going to get and at the end i'm kind of disappointed but look at the score guys I, I, bridge is such a weird game like oh man i didn't get that extra trick at the end but 80 or, sorry plus 110 was worth 92.4 pretty awesome right so so this was uh this was one of my better results of recent note uh and you, you'll notice that uh the early results is if you play this very early if you play this uh tournament like uh friday morning you might see your results are terrible you can go back and look at these results uh throughout you can get your provisional score just by going back and looking at the tournaments you completed and and, and you'll see it kind of adjust but you won't know the final result till the end and uh, the reason the results are poor at the beginning is because most of the pros play at like 1 a.m they they're they're itching to get into this tournament so they play it pretty early so some of the better scores will be posted then but here uh this is way 
where I stand now on Saturday afternoon. We'll see where we end. But I thank you guys very much. And if you want to play in this tournament, it's totally free. Just in the comments, go to the link below. You'll be able to sign up. Only sign up one time, and you will be enrolled in this tournament for all time. And you can play with us and then join us on YouTube here for these results ready videos. So thank you very much for joining, guys. I will see you again next week for the finale of the January series. And we'll get, get a winner in the pro category. And, uh, you know, just... Uh, certainly go over some of their better results of the month as well. So thanks for joining, guys, and I will see you next week in the Weekend Pro-Am.